Well, hi, everybody. Uh, it is Amanda again with the client relations team here at the San Francisco Giants. Thanks for joining us for a huge celebration tonight. We have a jam-packed evening, so I uh, won't spend too much time off the top. But wanted to take a quick moment just to remind all ticket members and anyone who had tickets to a game in April and May that we sent all of the details about those games in emails last week. So if you didn't get an email or if you have any questions, reach out to your Giants rep and we are definitely here to help. We also want to take another moment to recognize another season ticket member hero in our community. Uh, tonight, we wanna to recognize Mitch and Amber Castros. Mitch is a retired firefighter and he and Maria have been active in providing, I'm sorry, he and Amber have been active in providing food, financial assistance, healthcare assistance, and other help to people in their community who are in need. They're also taking care of Mitch's uncle by preparing and delivering food to him directly. And Mitch's sister, Maria, is also providing home cooked meals for a family friend who is elderly and disabled. So a special thank you to all of the Castro's family for taking up the charge and impacting the lives of those affected. Today is also National Nurses Day, so we wanna take a special moment to recognize and thank all of our fans who are nurses. Thank you for what you do today and every day. And with that, I think it's time for some birthday celebrations. So Dave, it's all yours. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, welcome everybody. Hi guys, how you doing hey, tonight? Hey, what's up? Hey. Big day today. Good to see you. It's a big day. And I, a lot of what we're going to do uh, tonight is centered around the 89th birthday of the great Willie Mays. Uh, Willie is at home tonight, not just celebrating his birthday, but we're told he's watching us tonight. So we can say hi and happy birthday to Willie uh, ourselves. And we'll do that over and over again. We got some special guests toward the end of the show. In particular, uh, we're going to talk uh, about Willie and his impact on their lives and their careers. We also have the Giants manager, Gabe Kapler, coming on in a couple minutes. Uh, and he'll talk about Willie, but also we got questions for Gabe, what he's been doing, what Giants players have been up to. So the Giants manager is going to uh, join us and uh, talk about some of that stuff. Uh, I promised last week we'd do a better job of Q&A, and I think we did a little better job of that. But the, the Q&A chat room, for those of you watching on Zoom, uh, is open. You can submit questions, I think particularly for Gabe Kapler, if you want to do that. Uh, we'll try to take some uh, fan questions and uh, we'll celebrate Willie's birthday tonight. It's our uh, Giants Chalk Talk at Home sponsored by Coors Light. And here we are again for a third uh, straight week. Guys, you want to start off with uh, a birthday wish for the great Willie Mays and, uh, you know, whatever you want to say off the top about one of our all time favorites. John, you want to lead us off? Well, happy birthday, uh, Willie. And, uh, of course, I grew up idolizing Willie Mays. He hit a home run, the first game my dad ever took me to back in 1962. Uh, also, uh, thanks to our, our engineer and producer on radio and KNBR, uh, Darren Chan, he went through the KNBR archives and unearthed something that I had no idea even existed. A play that I saw, second game of a doubleheader back in 1970, was three days before Willie's 39th birthday so keep this in mind this was a play involving a guy who was basically 39 years old the Giants had just played the uh, the first game of the doubleheader Willie played the whole game which went 13 innings now in the nightcap he was in the lineup again at age 39 and Willie McCovey came up with Willie Mays at first base Willie Mays had just knocked in the first run for the Giants and the Phillies went into that big shift that teams did for McCovey, leaving nobody at third base. And McCovey laid down a bunt right along the third base line. And Willie Mays scored all the way from first on this bunt at age 39 after having just played 13 innings in game one. And McCovey ended up with a double. He bunted for a double and Mays scored from first on it. And uh, that's not a play you see very often. It's the only time I've ever seen it. And uh, for a guy to do that at age 39 and uh, in the second game of a doubleheader uh, made it all the more special. He was still doing incredible things 
uh, as late as 1970. And uh, that was 50 years ago this past Sunday, three days before his 39th birthday. So uh, a little Willie Mays story there. And thanks to Darren Chan for finding that uh, for me, which we were able to play earlier today on KNBR with the, uh, the great Russ Hodges behind the mic. Very cool. Very nice. Mike? Well, one of the great traditions in the Giants organization, uh, when you come over from another organization or when you come up from the minor leagues, is spring training. And uh, it happened to me in 1983, the very first time I ever uh, <clears throat> put on a Giants uniform. It's in Scottsdale Stadium. And uh, I put it on, and uh, you know, it, it's, got, uh, it's got some weight to it. I, I've always said that. I think it's the best way to describe it you do feel the ghost when you put that jersey on. And uh, it's always been a beautiful jersey, a beautiful uniform. So you come out and you're, you're tucking it in and you're pretty proud to wear it. I left my locker. I walked through the clubhouse in Scottsdale Stadium. I walked over to where the coffee was and I turned the corner and I bumped right into Willie Mays. And what was so cool about it is that he had on the same uniform that I had on. And it was uh, an amazing feeling to think that uh, that I shared that, that honor of being able to wear the uniform that Willie Mays wore. And the story that I tell, it's happened to all of us that have put on that uniform because Willie is such a part of spring training and he has always been so great with, with the clubhouse and uh, just the, the ambiance that is the Major League Clubhouse. But he's so great in welcoming new players and especially the kids that come up for the minor leagues. So, for all of us who got to share that uniform with you, Willie, uh, we want to say happy birthday to you. And uh, it's one of my most precious memories of being a giant. Okay. Well, Willie, I, I want you to, to, to listen to this very carefully. Growing up outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you were not my guy at all, <laughs> at all. As a matter of fact, you were like fifth or sixth on the list of being my guy. It was Eddie Matthews and it was Hank Aaron. So, so as I grew older, it was going to take a lot for somebody to change my opinion of who my guy was. And uh, as Mike mentioned, once, once I met you, once I listened to you, and uh, in all the years of all the highlights and pictures that we get to see of Willie Mays, uh, you're now my guy. Hank Aaron, take a hike. Eddie, I know you passed away, but you know what? You're gone. Willie Mays, you're my guy. And the thing that, that I love most about Willie Mays is when you watch the highlights of him, he never looks like he played the game where he was angry. We played for Frank Robinson. He played the game angry. Willie always looked like he was happy. And I know that that there were games where he got mad, but he never showed that he got mad. He just looked like he was happy to be in a Giants uniform and happy to be out there to beat somebody's ass. And that's what I liked about him. <laughs> nice going. How about you, Dave? What do you got? Uh, two quick things. Number one, uh, I'll echo the three of you. Happy birthday, Willie. Hopefully you are watching and listening from home. We're thinking about you. Uh, Willie's just doing great. We see him all the time, which is one of the ultimate cool things uh, about the job that we do is Willie comes to just about every Giants home game and he's in the clubhouse before the game and he wants all of us and everybody to come in and say hi to him like he, he just loves talking baseball I, I, I told this story Gable uh, was on with us a couple weeks ago and I told I told this story of my son last year went in to say hi to Willie my son's 10 years old and wide-eyed and knows about the history of the game and Willie asked him if he wanted to sign baseball and my son said sure of course I do so <laughs> Willie Willie takes the ball and starts to sign it and then he finishes and he goes oh that was a terrible signature and he turns the ball about halfway and signs it again and hands David a, a ball <laughs> David's got the only ball that has two Willie Mays autographs on it I think uh, that's out there which I think is Pretty cool. The other thing is the last time I went to see Willie at his house just to visit, Willie ended up taking me out to his garage and I left with like one of Willie's golf bags from, the, uh, you know, a sponsored tournament and a couple other things. So, you know, Willie, if you got any more stuff, you're looking to get off your hands. I'm 
here and available and <laughs> I, it's a short drive down to your house <laughs> happy birthday Willie. good stuff uh with that we should say hi to the guy who just popped on the screen uh our our friend gabe kapler giants manager hi gabe how are you dave i know i'm a little early but uh really good to be on here with everybody and excited to have some some good baseball conversation we are we're mostly going to talk baseball but do you want we just said ha willie is watching tonight and listening and so we all just spent a minute saying happy birthday to the great Willie Mays. You want to join us? Absolutely. Happy birthday, Willie. I mean, I always feel honored to be able to, to wish somebody like Willie Mays a happy birthday. And I think right about now, um, we've a lot of us have experienced the Last Dance documentary. And, you know, we're thinking a little bit about Michael Jordan. And when I think about Willie Mays and, and the impact he's had on the game, I think there's only a few people in sports history that kind of fall into that category like Michael, Willie, Babe Ruth and it's about where where it ends and in a lot of ways and uh yeah I'm, I'm honored to wish Willie and a uh, happy 89th and Willie if you're out there watching really honored to know you. Well Renee, Renee just texted me and said they're watching and listening so he's he's awesome. hearing all our birthday wishes. Awesome. So that, nice to hear Renee cool. with me that's cool. Yeah that's pretty cool we have some uh some uh fan questions Gabe for you we'll wait a few minutes to get to those but I encourage fans if they wanted to to jump in with questions for you we could uh, do some of that guys you have anything you want to start out ask Gabe what he's been up to or or whatever yeah what have you been up to <laughs> <laughs> first of all hi Mike hi Dwayne hi John hey, hey. hey. and everybody yeah. else on the on the call yeah I mean right now I'm, I'm sitting on uh I'm on the balcony in in Scottsdale uh, I think if we end up opening our uh, modified camp whenever that is in San Francisco, like the moment I hear that that, that might be what we do, I'll, I'll head back to the Bay. Uh, otherwise, I'm here in Scottsdale just in case we open up at some point here and have been doing Zoom calls all day on uh, on a balcony and a condo that I'm, that I'm renting. And yeah, what I've been up to is basically talking to our field staff. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard about the junior giants videos that our staff has has produced, giving them an opportunity to to work on drills and skills uh the junior giants in their homes um so we've been working on those videos and and communicating with players generally that's taking up most of the days we should i, I we should just follow up on that game in case people don't know about that sure. are those out are they rolling out how are those videos it's, it's basically you and your coaches are doing instructional videos for junior giants players and giants fans is that right exactly um so by way of example i think sometimes that's the best way to to demonstrate is kai correa our bench coach is teaching the junior giants how to make a glove out of cardboard in in their homes and andrew bailey is throwing targets up on walls and you know teaching pitchers how to how to have uh, better throwing mechanics and you know i'm i've been talking about things like leadership and the importance of, of education and um, talking about how you know we don't we don't stand for for bullying at the Giants and things of that nature. Um, and right now, I think it's a really important time for leaders in our community to use the platforms that we've built to send really strong messages. So honored that we have the opportunity through the Junior Giants, through through the Giants Community Fund to to do some of that good work. Our coaching staff has done a tremendous job. I'm really proud of them, and I think. The junior giants are going to get a really cool four-week program that they can be successful with at home. Cap, I want to ask you about how you're keeping the players ready to go. Outside of Johnny Cueto Instagram, so we really don't know what everybody's doing. And yeah. how is uh, how are the pitchers keeping their arms ready? I mean, how do you how do you keep it going? Yeah, I think the answer to that question, Mike, is that it's it's pretty variable. Some guys are are in their hometowns where things are a little bit more relaxed and they're able to find a catcher and go to the local park and, and, and set up a bullpen session. And other guys are, are doing it in their homes. And I, I don't know if you saw Sam Coonrod's recent video, but I think he was competing with his wife uh, with a net set up and they were both throwing pitches in, into a net. And um, I think guys are, are challenging themselves to create their own game-like conditions and, and upping the intensity because that's the only way our players are going to be ready when they come back to camp is, to be good at, at stimulating game conditions. And really what, it, what it's about is an elevated form of, of like shadow boxing. And the more intense you are with that practice, the more likely it is 
that you're going to show up at a modified camp with all of your, your, your tissues and your joints flexible and explosive and ready to go. John, how about you? What, how, how big of a uh, burden is that for these players, though, when they don't really know when this uh, new spring training, or even if, but let's say that it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and, and how long is it going to happen? And I saw where Scott Boris, the, the big super agent, he wants the teams to start preparing for it now, even though they don't have a date for the regular season. And it, it sounds like he's just concerned about possibility of injuries, not having a long enough time to prepare for when the season does start and all of that. Uh, what's, what's your view on all of that? No, I appreciate that, John. I think we have to, we are starting right now to prepare our players that's, that something is coming. We can't say for sure. And there's still a lot of speculation out there about how long our camp is gonna be and how big our rosters are gonna be and what the rules are, are gonna be when we finally get there. But I know the, the article that you're referring to, the op-ed in the New York Times that Scott Boris wrote, and I know what, what Scott's intentions are. And obviously Major League Baseball, the players, all the, the coaches around the game, the city of San Francisco, we all want the same thing. And that's to get back to playing baseball as, as quickly as possible. And I think rather than say, to answer your question directly, it is a big burden on the players. It is a big burden on the staff. But what we have to do is trust that their professionals give them all the all the tools that they need to prepare for our camp and just say it's coming. So now is the time to start to ramp up. Now is the time to take your conditioning a little bit more seriously. Now is the time to practice your skills. So when we we hit camp, we hit camp with the you know running, and we're 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 able to build on what we already did in our modified off season. And you feel confident it's coming. I have a lot of optimism. Um, you know, I think it's unfair for any of us to try to predict what's going to happen two weeks from now. I don't think if we look back three weeks, we would have predicted where we are right now. And so I, I want to hold out the possibility that, that I just don't know. And I have to be open with that, but I feel a lot of optimism. I can tell you that in the more recent communication that we've had in our in our managers meetings with the commissioner there has been a lot of optimism and more optimism now than at any point during our isolation period and and i'm excited about that i think our, our players are starting to sense that and um i think the baseball community at large is starting to sense that as well all right let's do a couple of fan questions because gabe you didn't know this but a couple of weeks ago i promised we'd be taking all these questions and then I just kept elaborating and the fans weren't happy with me. So <laughs> now I'm a little sensitive to that. <laughs> We're going to take sure. some questions. Barbara Snow is getting right to the point. What's the pitching rotation this year? Uh, I think that's, uh, that's TBD, but I think one of the cool things is, you know, I'm on record. The giants are on record. Um, the last day of camp when we, we closed everything down, I said that, that Johnny Cueto was going to be our, our opening day starter. I still anticipate that, that that'll happen. I mean, obviously a lot can change. We don't, we can't see the future. Uh, behind him, we talked about uh, Jeff Samarja and, and Gosman and Smiley, both kind of being the three and four starters, depending on who we play out of the gates. And then there's a little bit of a battle going on still for the, the fifth spot in the rotation. And quite frankly, since we don't know how many games we're gonna play, how many off days we're gonna play, I, I can't swear that we're not gonna be creative about building our pitchers up slowly and safely. Um, and we may need to, to use some relievers earlier in the game as a result. I mean, you guys, right? Are you guys are gonna have to be ready for the possibility that the roster rules are totally different. I mean, we already have some changes coming this year before all this. And there, I, I mean, from everything that we hear, there's a possibility that the rules could be different in terms of how you construct a team, what team you bring to the park that day, who knows? Sure. Sure. And just acknowledging, Dave, that we're still kind of speculating about this stuff and that nothing is set in stone. I think it is kind of exciting that because we're in a in kind of uncharted territory, it might be an interesting time to roll out some different rules. I'm not saying that that's what Major League Baseball is going to choose to do. We're obviously going to support any direction that the commissioner's office takes. And we're going to we're going to be really good within the construct of those rules, I think. That's what is I'm, I'm most proud of with with our staff and our front office is how strategic we can be around any rules that we're given because we'll just we'll just out hustle and, and find ways to be good at it. Um, but all of that being said, 
I think it's fun that, that, that the rules might change a, a little bit. And I have a, a lot of old school in me, a lot of traditionalist in me, but this might be the time to, to experiment and see how, how fans like it. Okay, quick two part. Quick, uh, John, I'll let you go. Let me get the, okay. uh, let me All get right. one more uh, fan question in, and then it's your turn. Uh, Keith Nofield asked, "What was the toughest issue as an opposing player or manager about Oracle Park?" And a follow up from another fan, uh, Tony: "What Giants hitter do you think will benefit the most from the new dimensions at Oracle Park?" Yeah, well, I'll answer. The, I'll answer the second question first because I think it's really interesting. I think Brandon Belt has a chance to really benefit from the fences being moved in just slightly. First of all, I think in, in camp, he was starting to really demonstrate uh, the ability to drive the ball in the air to the pull side. So I can see just a little bit of an adjustment on the dimensions really benefiting Brandon Belt. I mean, Buster has been swinging the, was swinging the bat really good in camp um, and driving the baseball as well. So I could see that benefiting uh, Buster as well. As an opposing manager, um, I think the thing that was most successful is I'd go out into the outfield with some of our outfielders and, you know, throw balls off the various points of the wall just to see how all of those angles played and what positions our outfielders needed to get themselves in. And luckily, I had the experience of playing at Oracle Park, so I could, I could speak from a place of experience. Um, so I think that the most challenging thing about Oracle is, is the angles in the outfield and then obviously the dimensions are, you know, all opposing hitters know they might square a baseball up, they might square it up in the air, and it might be a homer in a different park. But in, in Oracle, in, including some some of the weather conditions, it's a lot difficult. It's a lot more difficult to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Good answer, John. Your turn. Oh, I, I was just going to follow up on these uh, the, the idea that we might have a, a chance to uh, to put in some new rules just for this one season only, and just see how that goes. If they were asking you about it what would be the, the rules you'd like to see put in for this, this kind of a, uh, an abbreviated season that we're, that we're hoping will happen? All right. Well, I will, I'll trust that this audience and this group is a, a very safe place here. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think under the circumstances and, and given the fact that we're, we're potentially gonna be playing a lot of games in a short period of time, and the number one most important thing is that our players stay healthy and that, that we have enough pitching. I could see a sudden death situation being really advantageous. So rather than getting into that, you know, 15th, 16th, 17th, 17th inning, and, and, and trust me, I've, I've been around some of the most exciting extra inning games ever. I, I actually like the fun of potentially putting a runner out there at second base um, and in, in the 10th or the 11th inning, giving each, each team a chance to score that run. All right. So I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. me too. Me too. Good agree. idea. So is it going to be from second base or the 25 yard line? <laughs> <laughs> it depends if we're oh, playing. Oh <laughs> so I, I was actually going to ask, ask you guys that question. How, how do you like broadcasting a game in the 15th or the 16th inning when sometimes the, the stands have really thinned out and everybody's out of pitching like, is that, are those fun games to broadcast or are those the kind of games that you kind of, you're hoping to get to the next day as soon as possible? Uh, we don't <laughs> want our team to lose. We don't. But when you get to the 18th, you kind of don't care. <laughs> you kind of want to go home. But, uh, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I think there's there comes a certain point where, everybody just wants to go home. I mean, w w not the guys in the dugout, obviously, but, uh, but I think it would be fun. Uh, put a guy on second. Let's see what happens. You know, don't do it for the rest of our lives, you know, do it this year. This is your chance to do it. And, uh, and I'm all for it. I mean, I, I mean, expand the rosters, you know, use the DH if you want to do that. Uh, I mean, I, this is the, if you want to, I'm good for one week using robotic umpires. Just one week. That's it. Uh, but I'm, I'm saying just give it a go. This is your chance. Kai brought up DH. Have you guys, have you guys as a staff talked about? I mean, we hear the possibility of the DH being universal if they scramble leagues. And have you guys talked about that possibility? 
cert I've certainly heard it bantered about, Dave. I, I think it's it's understandable. Um, I'm personally on on the traditional side when it comes to National League Baseball. I, I love the strategy of trying to figure out when that point is in the game when you have to go for it and pinch hit for a pitcher by way of example. I don't love watching pitchers hit. I don't I just don't find that especially exciting. But I do like the concept of kind of out strategizing the, the opposing club through finding the most important moment in the game to get your pitcher out of there and bring in a fresh arm or to pinch hit for him and, and uh, take him out of the game because you have to score a run from third base when, with less than two outs by way of example. Um, so I've certainly heard that, you know, the DH is at least a possibility. And I mean, I think that would be kind of fun for a guy like Pablo Sandoval to get him in the, in the lineup a little bit yeah. more recently. Uh, he'd be a fun guy to deploy in that situation, but um, you know, whatever, whatever is decided, we will just be as good as we can be under, under those circumstances. Mike, what do you got? Well, I, I, I agree with, uh, this is the time for change. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I never thought I'd ever say this because I've always enjoyed hitting as a pitcher and I just enjoy the strategy of the bunt sacrifice bunt. I thought was a beautiful play, but it's just so poorly executed now. And it's just eroded to the point where you watch a guy up there and bunt three balls foul and, you know, it's a strikeout and screws the inning up. I, I just think, you know, this year just go all DH and, uh, and have at it, you know, <laughs> let it be all about the launch angle and see how many home runs you can hit. And you how much offense you can get there. I don't, I don't want to be on that. Okay. Wait, who was that? So that's a familiar <laughs> voice. Yeah, that, was, that was a familiar voice. I think it just well, saved I, me from a rant. So well, let's bring it on. No, I think he's going to. Hey, man, it was me, man. I was practicing. No, Come no, on, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Hey, Dusty. Hey, what's going on? We Cap, how you doing, you, dude? Though. Doing well, doing well. All right, Dusty, man. can you hit the button that says uh, open up your Ladies. video or share? There you go. Hey! Hey, yeah. what's up, Bake? Hey, what's up, man? What's hey. going on? Dude? Is that how Darren in the background? That, that was Darren in the background. Make sure I'm doing it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But He's I'm not supposed idea. to be on yet, right? He's your idea. You're, you're a little early. Okay, well, I'll, I'll I'll sign off and listen to you guys now and tell me when to tune back in. You well, we'll talk about you. you. Great. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> you guys have been talking about me for years. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, man. I'll be All right, back we'll in a minute. All right, All right. You got it. Later. See you, Dust. Oh, my goodness. He's he is a good one, isn't he, Cap? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I grew up, you know, watching his era of baseball. So, and, and, Obviously, I remember the the early time of my childhood when you know, I'm watching just the tail end of his career, but then also watching Dusty as a manager. He's so warm, so comfortable in his own skin, has the ability to put all of his players at ease. Every player that I've talked to raves about playing for for Dusty Baker. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously an honor to to wear the same uniform that he once did. And um, yeah, really, really cool to see him pop up on a, on a Zoom screen. Yeah. Very cool. Do you have it? Did you get a chance? We had another fan question um, about this Korean baseball and the fact that maybe it's a little more accessible to us now and we have more recognizable names over there. You have a guy, Darren Ruff, who's coming back from Korea and was having a great spring training. Do uh, you have any thoughts on whether you'll be watching, paying attention to how those games are going? What do you well, think about it? I have a couple of immediate thoughts. The first one is around um, bat flips and celebrations, which yeah. is quite hotly contested about, you know, uh, baseball in Korea and how, how they celebrate home runs and, and bat flip quite a bit over there. I personally love celebration in baseball. Um, I think it's really important for players to express themselves. I think we're always trying to capture a younger audience. And um, my son is, I have two sons. One is 20, one is 18. They want to see a very colorful brand of baseball where people are expressing emotion, high-fiving, and bat-flipping. So um, that's my take on expressing emotion as, as a player. I'm all for the Matt Williams style, too. I love Matt Williams' home run, put your head down, get around the bases. But I can also appreciate the David Ortiz style and the Manny Ramirez style and even some of our, our more contemporary players that 
are, are showing, you know, quite a bit of emotion. So leaving that aside, I will be watching Korean baseball because I will watch any baseball. That's number one. And number two, I think we have an opportunity to learn best practices and the way they roll out baseball, the way they test, the way they ensure that their players and their staff and anybody that's in the stadium stays safe. I think that's the most interesting thing about baseball in Taiwan right now and the most interesting thing about baseball in Korea. And I'm fascinated by the fact that Taiwan is, is already starting to toy with putting fans in the seats. I know they had talked about something like 250 in the first rollout and then maybe something like 1,000 in the second rollout. And I love the idea of baby steps. I think we're going to learn a lot from what's going on um, in, in Korea and Taiwan right now. Cap, let me ask you a question about celebration. Uh, because you're, you're for it and, and the bat flips and the back, back flips and all that way. I, 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 okay. I understand. But if you're a pitcher or if you're a hitter and you're t hitting a, taking a bat against the pitcher and you strike out and he does something like, you know, do something like this or sit down or do something right. like that. Right. How are you going to feel about that? Well, I, I would draw the line at directing the celebration towards the opposition. I, I, I don't think that that's healthy for the game at all. I think that's like rubbing somebody's nose in it, and I don't respect that at all. I believe in celebrating with your teammates. So, I mean, assuming that one of our players hits a big home run, a meaningful home run, and flips the bat towards our dugout and looks at his teammates and gives some sort of acknowledgement that we're all in this together, even if it's a little bit slow, I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Now, if – you're directing that towards the pitcher and you're pointing and you're shouting. Uh, I don't think that's cool. And from a pitcher, like if you're, you're a pitcher and you want to fire an arrow up in the sky after the final out of the game, or you want to fist pump as you walk off the mound or kind of dance off the mound, as long as you're not trying to rub our hitters nose in it, I'm totally fine with that as well. Celebrate, celebrate with your teammates, like NFL players celebrate when they score a touchdown when N like NBA players celebrate when they, they hit a three pointer and like hockey players celebrate when they score a big goal and they skate to the other side of the ice. I think all that is, is, is totally good for our game. And I think it just gets more eyeballs. And at the end of the day, all of our jobs are dependent on our fans loving our sport. Yeah, I think it's well said, Mike, you buying that? Well, Dave, you're a hitter, not a pitcher, so I, I don't know. I mean, but I, you know, it's it's it it is a a, a different way to look at it um, because I don't think you're going to be able to stop the tidal wave of celebration. You're just not because you know you watch youth baseball all the way down to t-ball, and the kids are t-ball, and they're they're flipping the bat on t-ball swings. It's right. pretty unbelievable as to how influential major league players are on the culture of amateur baseball all the way down to t-ball but, but you, I, I just think it's a hard line to draw because you know when you give up a home run and a guy stands there and watches it and he flips the bat if you're a pitcher you're not happy about it and it's just i, I mean i you may be celebrating with your teammates and whatnot but when you're on the mound and you just got your butt kicked you don't want to see that type of of, of celebration because to me that becomes personal and that's the hard line to, def to define. So I think there's, um, there's some nuance and some skill to celebrating. And there's some respect that comes with celebrating. I mean, have you seen, have you delivered a pitch, had a home run hit, seen somebody celebrate in a way that you think is okay? Or have you been calling a game and seen somebody hit a big home run and celebrate in a way that you thought was respectful? I haven't thought about that. I mean, when you're, calling a game I mean you, you really don't give that much opinion that's negative uh, because there are consequences I mean if I say something on on TV uh, about an opposing player that hits a home run well that enrages the, the fan and I don't think that's a healthy uh, feeling for fans to have against opposing players when it's when it's when the when the, the broadcaster has caused that so we have to be very careful um, but we do have our private opinions about celebration, uh, about what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. Sure. And, uh, again, I, I get back to, this, to the, to the thing where just respect the guy that you're going to play against for 10, 15 years. This isn't like high school or college where you're going to play against a guy for a year or two or three or whatever. When you get to the level of the big leagues, you're playing against that guy for a long time. If you're, if you're a good player. 
why would you go out of your way to show that guy up? Because somewhere down the line, he's going to get you. And then it's going to flip. But it's just a matter of, of, of respect for the person you're playing against. And uh, so I don't know. It's just a hard hard line to define. So as, as, a, as a, a player myself, I don't think I ever felt comfortable enough to show that kind of emotion. However, when I look back on all the games that made the most impact and the most impression in my mind, it was after a big moment where somebody – stole third base in a big moment or Dave Roberts steals second base in, in 2004 in game seven of the ALCS. And there is a moment where his face lights up or he, he pumps his fist or he screams or something that gets me so invested and so fired up about the game of baseball. And I think we all have those memories. And if, if people weren't celebrating, we wouldn't have those moments. I love those moments. We all do. I mean, that's baseball. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, so I, I think we've kind of got off, gone off into a little tangent here, but it's <laughs> it's, a, it's great for discussion, which is what we're doing. We're talking ball. Yeah, that's it. That's what this is all about. We are talking ball. John, do you have any more questions before Gabe, before he has to go? Well, I, uh, I, I did want to say one thing. Uh, this is Willie May's birthday. We've been talking about Willie. And I think one of the things that people loved about Willie when he came on the scene that he, he was a breath of fresh air. You could see that he loved being on the field. He loved playing the game. He not only had great talent, great ability, but he loved to be out there and making great catches and, and stealing bases, hitting the big home runs. In those days and throughout his entire career, if uh, he did something that got under the skin of the opposing pitcher, then Willie knew, and every other player knew, that the next time he came up there, there was going to be a pitch coming right at his head. So, sure. and, and there was oftentimes pitches coming right at his head anyway. Yeah, sure. Don Drysdale or somebody was on the mound. So, so it, that was a different kind of an era. And I think a, a, a lot of that goes back to, to those days. But uh, I, I'm, I'm 100% in agreement that uh, just being colorful and and not directing it at the opposing pitcher or at an opposing team, an opposing player. Uh, what's wrong? Let, let's see the emotion. Let's see the, the joy that, that made Willie Mays uh, so likable and such uh, helped make him such a big star. And uh, later on, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, the same thing. People say, wow, that, he, he's the kid. Even when he got to be 37, 38 years old, they still call him the kid because he loved being on the field and you could see it in his, in, in his demeanor. So. Uh, uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm all for that. The, the, the one question I had for Gabe, though, was you played for a long time. I think, what, 1998 uh, up until 2010, so 12, 13 seasons in the big leagues. Played a little bit in Japan. The first time you ever hit a pinch hit home run was against the Giants, uh, maybe 2008. Do you remember the home run? Uh, do you remember the situation? This uh, this. I have not thought about this in I don't know how long, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to be right here. So I hope I don't blow this, but I think it was Jonathan Sanchez, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I mean, John, can you confirm that or who was on the mound? Yeah. No, it was it was Sanchez. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, cool. So and and if I'm not mistaken, also it was it was in Milwaukee and not in San Francisco, and I think it went into the and it went into the bullpen. I don't remember the situation of the game, but I I obviously remember that home run well. Massive bat flip. No. <laughs> yes. I, 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 didn't have, I didn't have the, the confidence as a player to, to bat flip ever. I did hit one, one walk-off home run in the 14th inning, going back to our extra innings story. And I think in that moment, there was at least a celebration at home plate. Um, and, you know, those are – I don't know. I, I, I wonder if everybody at least would agree that a walk-off home run is the one time when it's really acceptable – to throw your hands up at some point around the bases and celebrate it. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. absolutely, 100%. Oh, yeah. I agree. Well, totally don't agree. take this personally, Gabe, but uh, the most popular question we got in the last few minutes was what was Kite drinking in that, in that uh, <laughs> martini glass? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's gone. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, good to catch up with you. Thanks for giving us a few minutes. I enjoyed Thanks, it. Gabe. Thanks, Great Cap. Time, guys. Have fun. Thanks. Talk to you later. You Thanks, Yeah, Cap. we'll have you back soon. Gabe Kapler. I, Gabe's, uh, Gabe is going to be, don't you guys think, 
you know, I, I know everybody's focused on how different he is from Bruce Bochy, who's been around for a long time. And he obviously is very different. But I think he's going to be a great fit with the Giants. I do. Yeah, think about somebody that replaces Bruce Bochy. Would we be happy if that guy tried to be Bruce Bochy? We Not probably happy. would like, that guy, what's he doing? So somebody totally opposite of Boch, like Gabe, I think is going to be great. And uh, uh, not knowing him at all, uh, I really come to like the guy. I really do. Well, yeah. And I think something that stood out to me when you look at his uh, background, his biography, uh, because he did, he was in the big league for, for parts of and most of 13 different seasons. Uh, he was a 57th round draft choice. So uh, nearly 1,500 players had been drafted that year before he got drafted. So then he got and, and made a very nice career for himself as a big league player. Uh, so I think that in terms of what the Giants are trying to do with all the teaching that they're going to uh, try and do during the season at the big league level, uh, as they uh, try to build the foundation to be a, a pennant contending team for a long time to come for year after year after year. Uh, to me, it kind of comes from his, his origins in the game. He was a guy that the odds were, I mean, what are the odds to be the 1500th player chosen in the draft and to have a 13 year career in the big leagues? I mean, a thousand to one, a million to one. I mean, it's, yeah. it's huge. And yet, yeah. and yet uh, he did that. There he is. Well, I think he's going to be a great fit for this organization. And I think he's going to be a great fit for this city. If you remember his press conference, when they announced him as manager, he had to walk a gauntlet. And uh, I, I think that since that time, and he handled it beautifully and with a lot of class and dignity. And I think since that time, he has taken advantage of this, this period where we're not playing baseball to get to know the city. He's done it through junior giants baseball. He's done, he's done it by accepting every interview request across not just the state of California, but across the country. And he's been very, very diplomatic and, and very positive about, about the next step, the next era following the, the, the great era of Bruce Bochy. And I just think that, uh, that San Francisco is going to fall in love with this guy. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Gabe Kapler era. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because we should plug, uh, you know, he mentioned it just briefly. He didn't want us to spend any time on it when I talked to him earlier today because he thought it should be a baseball conversation. But he's done two really cool things here during this quarantine. The JR Giants at home.org. I looked it up while we were talking. So JR Giants at home.org. And he and the Giants coaches are doing all these clinic videos free for anybody who wants to watch them, any kids. I mean, it's really kind of a remarkable thing. And then he also has done some work with a group because he does. I mean, Mike, I think you're right. He's fallen in love with San Francisco already. There are a bunch of city restaurants that are doing a lot of good things to help feed uh, those who are really in need right now. And I think the if you look up search Dine, not 911, Dine. One one, and if you search that, it's a it's a nonprofit that's right now doing stuff to help people in need in San Francisco. And Gabe has pitched in and helping raise money. And so anyway, he didn't necessarily want to plug that stuff, but I think we should plug it for him. Good for him. I think we should. Well, should we invite Dusty to to uh, unmute himself and come back in? And Mr. Have, Bonds. I see we have another uh, special guest. Oh, oh Jim. Hi, Barry. Hey, how hey. you guys doing? Hey, babe. Dusty, What's unmute yourself or, or get Darren to unmute you. How's that? The B. B. Uh, hey. I see Dusty the B. on What's... the next page. <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> Nothing, man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm doing good. You looking good, man. Feeling good, you know? You looking just, you looking just like your mama, you know that? <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. <laughs> I, just, man, I just cut off a 60 mile bike ride. Wow. Six, oh, stop. Yeah. Damn it, miles. it took you 14 hours. Come on, yeah, quit bragging. Hey, man, <laughs> I'd be in the bed now if I did a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eyes are a little droopy. Yep. Well, we, we, we could talk to you guys forever, but I, I, I do want to tell you, Willie is watching and listening tonight. And the main reason we wanted you both to come on, not just to say hi to you, was 
because it's Willie's birthday and we were saying yeah. happy birthday to, to the greatest of all time. And uh, so, you know, if you guys, before we start peppering you with questions, Willie's watching and listening. You, you can wish him happy birthday yourselves. Well, go happy ahead, B. Happy birthday, Willie. Love you, man. Happy hey. birthday. Willie, happy birthday, brother. Hey, man, it's, uh, uh, we talked today and uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and especially, especially on your birthday. Dusty, what was your first interaction with Willie? When did you first get to know him, be around him? Uh, actually, uh, it was uh, through Bobby, uh, you know, through Bobby Bonds, uh, Barry's dad. And so, uh, you know, first time I, I met Willie, I was with the Braves. I was a young kid. Bobby introduced me. And, uh, you know, Willie gave me a, a glove. You know, he gave me a, I think it was a McGregor kangaroo hide glove. And it was a beautiful beautiful glove and I mean he was just you know he'd give you anything and you know if he had here take this kid and I was like really and uh, I don't know what I did with that glove I think somebody took it tell you the truth but you know Willie's a, a you know a free-hearted uh, a kind man that uh, you know that'll give you the shirt off his back and that was the first time first time I met Willie and uh, you know he and Hank were always battling on who was who was the best who was going to be who was going to break the record and so you know, I was curious, uh, uh, you know, as a young player to always, you know, be around them. Uh, I'll tell you a story right quick. Um, Willie, you know, we're around the batting cage. And so Willie, I'm just sitting there peeking and Willie was playing me right behind second base. I said, hey, man, you better back up. You know, I said, man, what you doing playing me right behind second base? And uh, he goes, he goes, man, let me see your hands, boy. And I showed him my hands. He goes, man, you choke up on the bat. I'm playing you right behind second base, take away all your singles. And he told me, he said, get some hand grips. And he told me to get some hand grips and work on my hand strength. And Willie had like a big golf ball in between his thumb and his forefinger. And I didn't have anything. And so, you know, from that day forward, you know, like I, I kept hand grips around because of Willie Mays. That's great. That's <laughs> awesome. And Barry, everybody knows Willie's your godfather, but I mean, it's literally true that from the time you probably, the, your earliest memories probably are, are hanging around Willie in, in the clubhouse, right? Well, when I was five years old, you know, I, I think the same thing why we ex, um, accepted all the kids in the locker room because that, you know, that was my special day with Willie, you know, being in the locker room with my father and then actually having, you know, Willie was my idol, you know, you, all the, one kid gravitates to one of the other players, you know, and I gravitated toward Willie. And, you know, it was cool. You know, you have the greatest baseball player of all times. And he takes me by the hand and walks me out on the baseball field and says, come with me, kid, you know, and took me under his wing. And, you know, I think we did the same thing for all the kids, like little Darren and, you know, my son and all the other kids uh, um, that were part of our locker room is, is kind of like the same experience, you know, yeah. it's that same experience that we, that I got to experience with Willie um that kind of just trickled with the with the rest of us and it kind of meant a lot to us when we had all the kids with us in the dugout um um during our careers because it was the same thing i had the opportunity to do with willie and, and darren looked up and darren looked up to you the way you looked up to willie yeah you and, know what and, i mean and so and like it, it came full circle yeah, yeah it's, it's been a it's, wonderful it's life really, yeah it's it's really it's exciting to know that you know, what's your, your chances of being a major league baseball player when, you know, at five years old with your dad and your, and your idol, and then you're playing professional sports, and then you have the opportunity to bring the next generation, and it's pretty fun. So, Willie, Willie started a lot for me in my career. Okay, jump in. Yeah, Bink, remember the night you and I went out in San Diego? Remember that night? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I remember. Come on, come on, come on, hey, dude. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I, really? So, we're, when Willie was a player, were you when you were young? Were you in in Southern California or were you in Sacramento? No, when I was young, um, um, I was in Riverside, but I met uh, uh, Willie once I came to Sacramento. And, and, you know, like we came uh, to San Francisco uh, in my first year, I got called, I was a September call up and, uh, you know, I couldn't wait to see Bobby, you know, cause Bobby was my high school prep, prep school 
uh, uh, idol because he was on my dad's little league team and I was following Bobby around. He's like four years older than me and uh, everybody wanted to be like Bobby. And, uh, you know, I remember when Bobby first got called up to the big leagues and, uh, you know, that's when I started following the Giants and and the Dodgers because I, I was in Southern California, but I loved, you know, the Giants because of because of Bobby Bonds, Willie Mays, Willie Kirkland, Willie uh, 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 McCovey. Uh, Willie McCovey, uh, Jim Ray Hart. I mean, man, those guys could hit. And, yes. uh, I mean, they could really hit. And so, you know, the Dodgers had probably better pitching, but the Giants had some of the best hitting in the world. So, uh, uh, the, you know, that's when I fell in love with Willie Mays. And my dad, my dad loved Willie Mays. You know, I mean, my dad, uh, you know, loved Willie Mays, how he played you know, his speed, I mean, talking about a five tool player. And then they told me that, that, you know, the six tool was how smart he was. They told me he used to call pitches, you know, from center field, you, you, uh, you know, for the pitchers. And, uh, you know, he used to move guys around. There wasn't any sabermetrics in those days. You had to have total recall on where a guy hit the ball. And they told me that he was the manager on the field. Great. Awesome. John. <laughs> cool. So, Barry, you were maybe five years old when yeah. Willie scored from first base on a bunt. We talked about it earlier tonight. He was just about 39 years old, and he scored from first base when Willie McCovey bunted. You didn't happen to be at that game, because I, if you'd been there and you'd seen it, I don't think you would forget it. No, we, my, my times with Willie was that we used to, all the family section at Candlestick was in section nine. And you had Tito's, Tito Puente's kids, Marichelle kids, me, our, my dad's kids, and all the kids used to get in section nine when Willie came up and Matt came up. That was like, all of his kids used to run around, the, run around the stadium like crazy, trying not to get in trouble with our parents, but we would just run everywhere. And Murphy was awesome because he was our, our, our babysitter at the, at the ballpark. <laughs> he used to give us gum because all the players used to, you know, they chewed tobacco and, and stuff, and we we weren't allowed, so we would put the big bubble gums, and we would ball them up and pretend we were all the players. But we would wait in section nine, and when Willie was up and Mac before the the, the right field stadium was open, and it went into the parking lot, and so we had the fence there at the parking lot, and we would all wait till they got up because you know every, mostly every time we went there, Willie hit a home run or Mac hit a home run. One of the two always hit a home run, and we would sit there and race to see who could get the ball first out of the parking lot so Murphy was cool because he wouldn't let anyone down in the parking lot so the kids can run all the way to right field and see who was the fastest to get the, get the ball and then I don't know we were kind of we didn't know better because we chucked I think we must have thrown Willie's and Max like 500 something baseball or 400 something baseball we would just <laughs> get the ball at the at the fence in the parking lot we would just throw it over the fence to the fans and God, I don't even think I'd have to play baseball if I kept all those yeah. baseballs that, they had, that I threw over the fence as we used to throw. And then we would, we would, Murph would always get us the, um, remember the bubble gums with the cards in it. So oh, yeah. we used to always get those and Murph used to get tons of them for us and we would open them up. You know, I had a big Bruce car, I had a bunch of cards and we would just give them away. We would throw them away. And then I used to make wallpapers in my bedroom out of them and stuff like that. But, you know, that was our greatest thing with Willie Mays and, and, and Mac and Puentes, Raiders. I mean, we can go on, on and on and on with all the players that I know that in, in the era of San Francisco, but they were, they were just different. Willie was just different than the rest. You know, it's, it's like you have that one, that Michael Jordan, that, you know what I mean? He was just so different than the rest that when he walked on the field, you know, everyone watched or everyone applauded or all of us kids got in line to to see him and then when he used to drive up in his pink i don't know what car was a pink cadillac or something he yep. used to have a pink car all the time and <laughs> we would all wait to wait for willie even as kids even as players kids we would wait to see willie drive in with his pink car and drive out with his pink car and no one left well we weren't supposed to. My parents would get pissed off at us all the time. It's like, why are we waiting for William? Like, we had to because we would cry. And it's like, that's it was, right. It was almost like this this huge icon just always came in and came out with us kids. But he was always so good with us. You know, it was like him 
and, and my dad and all of them were in Tito, especially Tito was always the comedian with, uh, on the baseball field. And, but Willie always had the kids and he was like, throw the balls out on the field with us, play catch with us. And, you know, it, it was just a great experience. It's, it's something you can't even explain. It's, it's like, you know, a chance of a lifetime for a kid to ever have, oops, sorry, my phone fell. <laughs> it's a, a chance of a lifetime for a kid to really have that opportunity. And then at the same time, be able to play in the same profession as your godfather. It's, it, it, you know, this is a dream come true. I mean, I couldn't even plan it any better than what happened in my career. Mike. My- hey, Barry, you know what I remember? Hey, Barry, I remember how his yeah. uniform fit. I mean, man, yeah. I mean, he didn't have a wrinkle in his uniform. And then after the game, he was always clean, man. He had those Sansa belt uh, uh, pants on, and he had an alpaca sweater and a turtleneck. I mean, Willie Mays was clean. I mean, that's, that's the thing I remember about Willie Mays, man. I mean, nobody looked better in their clothes <laughs> than Willie Mays. <laughs> yeah, and Willie never really – Willie, I think mean, maybe in the early part, but when San Francisco, Willie didn't get knocked down as much because Mac was hit behind him. Yeah. He used to say, Really, we used to, we could never understand because he used to step out like I used to call him a bucket hitter. And he'd step in that bucket, but he can hit that ball to right field, Ooh. get that jet stream better than anyone I've ever Anybody. seen. You know, but my my biggest memory was when him and my dad collided in right center. I me too. Could not, I could not ever believe that he caught that ball and I, I I mean he was literally knocked out for a few minutes and we were all you know, everyone's like Oh no, the oh, Giants no. are gone now without Willie, right? You know, and and you know, a few minutes he got up and he had the ball, and we were just—I mean, that was probably one of the greatest catches I ever seen. Yep. Hey Barry, no, no, what I remember too. Also, when Willie hit a—I I think one game he hit a double, but he stopped at first base, so they yeah. wouldn't walk Big Mac. You exactly. Know what I, you know what I mean? And I was exactly. like, man, that was—I mean, that was some ingenious stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, Willie was so far ahead of his uh, of his time. I mean, uh, uh, mentally on the field. I mean, he knew he knew everything on the baseball field. And and I read an article about him how his dad made him play every position or something. Right? You probably know that, right? Better yeah, than me. For, oh yeah, for sure. And then you know the stories about Willie going out to right field and positioning the players is true because we were kids. We were there. They used to have that little box um, for the pitchers. You know, the bullpen. And Willie would. He, when it was super cold, he would sit inside there and then sometimes he'd walk around and we were kids. So we were always running around and we could see him out there and we could see him out there. We didn't know what he was doing at that time. So when, you know, when we were hearing the stories about the, when, you know, he's sitting there saying he used to go out there and position the player. You know, I'm a witness. I was there. I mean, I saw him out there doing that. And, um, you know, yeah, you're right, Dusty, because Willie, you know, people like that come, what, you know, once in a blue moon, right? Cool. And oh, yeah. where he knows what's going to happen. He can predict what's going to happen in advance. He could, um, and that's why I idolize him so much. And that's why I was such a good student of the game. But he, you know, he was always teaching me too, what to know, how to predict things, what to think about, um, how to how to play the game, how to understand your opponent, how to not take your opponent for granted. So, there's so many things about Willie Mays. And me. Oh, I remember the oh, Dusty. Remember the time when him and my dad had that home run hitting contest at, in spring training, and we lost. Willie and my dad. I mean, Willie was God. He must have been in his <laughs> late fifties, sixties, late fifties. My dad. Yeah. And Willie hit. Willie beat my dad by one home run. I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. Barry. Hey, man, and I, we never, were in New I didn't York. want to talk to my dad. I was like, how are you going to let yeah. the old dude beat you, dad? <laughs> hey, hey, Barry, he beat us, man. When he was with the Mets, they had a home run hitting contest. I was with the Dodgers. And I think it was me, mm-hmm. Say, Garvey, and, and Willie won the home run hitting contest. I think he was like, I don't know, 43, 44. I don't know how old he was, but I, <laughs> I didn't even want to go back to the dugout. Because <laughs> Willie, I'm serious, Willie beat us all. You know yeah, I mean? you know, and I was kind of like embarrassed because, you know, you, you know, it's like, but now I get it, you know, because I can still hit yeah. home runs too. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sitting there going, I'm like, God, he's beating us. That doesn't make any sense. This guy's been playing baseball all the time. What's going on? And Willie always said, if I can see it, I can hit it. I That's believe right. It. That's right. Mike, you're dying to say hi to these guys. Oh, yeah. I, it's a privilege, you guys, to get back together again, talk some ball. But I have a question for Barry because, you know, you grew up with, 
I mean, baseball's numbers and, and yeah. Willie Mays' numbers, you know, over 3,000 hits. I mean, his home run total, 20 all-star teams, played 23 years, hit 303. I mean, amazing numbers. Yeah. But the number that was special for so long was his home run total. And then there was a time when you were chasing it. Yeah. The Giants brought him on every road trip when you were running close to 660. Tell us about what that meant to you and that experience. You want me to tell you what Willie was telling me? He was like, if you don't hurry up, and get this over with. <laughs> I ain't I'm ready to go home. Uh, you know, right. but it was, uh, Michael, it, it's, honestly, it was hard for me because Willie was the, you know, like I said, he was, he meant the world to me and he still does, obviously. But, um, you know, you, I put Willie and my dad was on such a high pedestal to where, you know, all I played the game was for their approval. And, you know, like I said, my dad was super hard on me. Willie was always like, I love you. You can do this. My dad was like, you know, I said, dad, I hit two home runs a day. My dad was like, so you swung the bat, hit two more tomorrow, you know, things like that. So I always had those two. I had the angel on this one and the devil on this one, you know, on both sides. And I, I'm trying to please them both. But, you know, Willie gave me that blessing to pass him, Michael. And if, if, if he didn't really give me that blessing to, to go after the record, um, I was nervous, you know, because I didn't. He was the greatest thing to me ever, you know, was the, the best thing that ever happened to me. It was like, it's hard to explain the emotion inside of me on what that man means to me so much and, and, and his teaching of me in the game. And, you know, every day we talk or we sit around and when during spring training he comes and he used to put that chair by the batting cage and, and get all over me and tell me what I need to do. But when he came up to me and he, he wanted to pass that torch on and he says, you know, you go after it all. You don't ever stop. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it lit a fire under me, Michael. It, it, it lit a fire on me that I cannot ever explain that I was going to break that record no matter what went down because Willie gave me the okay. And if it wasn't for Willie giving me the okay, I don't know what would have happened. I probably, I would have froze. I, I needed him for that, Michael. I needed his blessing. I needed his okay for, for, for my career. And he gave that to me and um, it, it meant the world to me. And, and like I said, it lit a candle and a fire underneath me, Michael, that there was nothing a pitcher could even do that was going to get in that way because he gave me that blessing. I don't want to interrupt you, Barry, but we, we heard from a source very close who would know what he's talking about. Pink Chrysler was the car. Oh, that's yeah, it. yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like a little Cadillac or one little Pink little <laughs> Who gave you that tip? <laughs> I'm not telling. I'm not telling. <laughs> was it, Probably was Willie told you. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's the only one who would know. <laughs> Willie's the only one who would know. That's all I'll say. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. I, you I know Willie. He's back there saying, boy, <laughs> you know what car was. That's, that's you know it wasn't no Cadillac. That's what he's exactly. saying. Yeah, he's like, you know, when you was in the car, you should know. That's right. <laughs> you know, but I can tell you, you know, the, the, the great part about Willie, guys, is the fact of is that I know everything about him. I, I mean, I could tell you probably every picture he has in his house. I could tell you where all his gloves and golden gloves are. I could tell you in the back room to which every bat and how he has it organized and wrapped around in each circle. And you literally... And I, I, I guarantee you, you can do it today. You can pick a bat and go 1961, what happened, all-star game or something, 62. Willie's going to tell yeah. you from the first inning to the first pitch to the last. And I said, Willie, I can barely remember my first and last name. How do you even remember all of this stuff? Because I don't even remember half the stuff. Well, like Willie told me, we had TV. Everything was by radio. So That's I had right. to hear everything. So I can hear everything and, and I can tell you everything that's gone. So my mind remembers everything. Also, you know, everyone knows Willie, he doesn't see well, but Willie can sit there and watch TV. I swear to God, on my father's grave. He can watch TV and he loves to watch the games. He watches them all the time, 24-7. <clears throat> He'll sit there and he can hear the sound of the bat on the ball on television and tell you if the guy hit a home run or he hit it good. I'm like, 
No, Willie, there's no way you can't even You're see right. the TV. TV's as big as you, <laughs> and you still can't. How do you know this? And it's just it, it's amazing how he can do that. I mean, I'm literally. I wish I had it on video. I swear, yeah. I wish I hey, had this on video. Hey, Barry, Barry, does he sign everything? He signs everything. Every, <laughs> you know everything, what I mean? even in his house, is signed. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, he hey, signs everything. I mean, his table is signed. He's not lying. His chairs are signed. Right. Every single thing hey. in Willie's entire existence is signed. And if it isn't signed, someone has to bring it for him to sign. That's, hey, Barry, he came in my office in Cincinnati, right? So he sits down mm -hmm. at this table. I got this table, a round table, where I eat dinner. Well, Willie signs my table. So I said, hey, Willie, go <laughs> yeah. inside of my table. He goes, hey, boy, I sign whatever I want. So now, yeah. <laughs> so, so now I got this idea. So whoever came in my office, I got the table right now. Uh, uh, he had to be a bad dude, a Hall of Famer. Whoever came in my office signed my table because of Willie Mays signed my table. <laughs> That's him. Hey, Rennell, what's yeah. up, girl? Hi. Hey, hey, hey Rennell. Rennell. What's up, Doctor? Oh, hi, Renell. <laughs> hi, Barry. Hi, guys. Good to see you all. Hey, oh, you too. Renell, you want to say Willie's watching, listening? You want to say happy birthday to uh, Willie Mays? Of course, I do. Um, are we, are we, do you want me to do it musically, or no? Not yet. We do want you to do it musically, but I just uh -oh. want. To say that. Go ahead. Well, hi, Willie. It's Renell. Wish you a very, very happy birthday. We love you so much. We're so blessed to have you around the ballpark and can't wait to get back there and, and gather and, and have you with us again. And um, just best wishes to you from me. Tommy's right here too. So we send all our love. Awesome. Well, you know, we, our, our Chalk Talks are sponsored by Coors Light. So whether it's a Coors Light or some other beverage, if you want to raise a- uh, You mean glass, one of these right here? That's it. You knew. Yes. Yeah. One of these. No, I didn't know. How'd you I know? Was just, I, was to hide I was trying to hide it, but since you brought it up, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you don't hide it. Come on. Don't hide it. <laughs> Willie got it. I'm 70 years old. If I want to have a chorus, I'm going to have a chorus. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> the, uh, I think, I don't All know right, if our, one of our tech people can share, you guys can see. Willie sent us a photo from earlier this afternoon. I don't know if we can share the screen or see it before we, uh, here we go. Let's see. Oh. Oh. That is awesome. That's Say a good hey. Go ahead. That's Say a good hey. That's pretty cool. Oh, they had big old hands on him. Man, I he know. had some meat hooks, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. That golf ball's that. still there, Dusty. Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> All right, John, you can take the picture down so we can see everybody. Uh, just great. All right, guys. Rennell, you, Dusty, before you go, Rennell's going to sing Happy Birthday, Lead Us All. Uh, okay. Then we'll let you go. You willing to sing along? Yep. Yeah, just not too loud. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, hit it, Rennell. All right, All right Rennell, whenever just you're ready. Thanks, Flem. I just want to say full disclosure, I had like the, I had like the equivalent of Tommy John surgery on my vocal cords, so I'm not 100% yet, but for wow. Willie, I'm going to give it my all. Here we go. Give it, your, give it a go. All right, Here all right. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. To you. To happy you. birthday happy birthday say hey kid our dearly beloved <laughs> famer, the greatest of all Willie. we love you willie happy birthday happy birthday you do you you happy birthday go willie go ahead hey 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 Job, John, Rennell. I didn't know you had that baritone voice. Hit it, John, one more time. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Barry, Happy Dusty, birthday. Rennell, thanks for being with us. Thanks for okay. saying hi, Trinell. 
B, I'll see, see you later, later, man. I'll see all okay, you guys later. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Tell Danny. Darren we got to hurry up and get back in the cage. B, I know good that's to right. see you. All right. All right. Yes, hey, Willie. Hey, 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 Willie. Hey, I love you. you. All right. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. I'll see you guys. Hey, okay, I like that lid you got on, crew. Oh, that's a bad <laughs> lid you got on. All right. I'll see you later. All right. See you Happy see birthday, guys. Right, guys. Great seeing you, Dusty. Very All right, John. Cool, right. I was, hey, I was, way to go, guys. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so yeah. are these other guys on? Can they hear us? I don't know. Yeah, if I'm signing off. Hey, oh. Bake, what about oh. San Diego? <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> what do you mean, be quiet? <laughs> All right, I'll see you. All right, see ya. All right. Oh uh, man! Find the eject button. Where do I? Where do I go and get out of here? You had been well, to San Diego? No. <laughs> well, he's he's gone now. What happened in San Diego? I don't Thought know. He was we, hanging? No, it was a couple of uh, L.A. Rams cheerleaders. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, Kite taking his shirt off. So who knows? Ah, uh, god dang! That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Uh, Let's go, Gabe. Yeah. Barry was great. He was and great. Then, Barry was great. Dusty was great. Uh, Gabe was great. So, and now Kite needs another quarantini. Fuck, this quarantini thing is a killing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right. All right. See you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, Kite signing off. I've got a couple things to plug so you guys can stay on or sign off if you want. Uh, oh. But, uh, hey, you just the Orange Friday at Home is presented by Dignity Health this Friday, 4 p.m. So it's a new, different start time. The uh, Giants live stream powered by Xfinity showing a Tim Lincecum 15 strikeout game, July 27, 2009. So that's uh, this Friday, 4 p.m. You can watch live on sfgiants.com, social channels, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And then the Inside Giants Moments podcast presented by T-Mobile. Uh, to tomorrow, a new one's coming out, and uh, Dave Jurecki is the guest. So uh, Dave's always great, great stories, wonderful person. So, John, you and I will be listening, I think. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> Dave Jurecki? Yeah, I'm there. I'm in. I, 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 I looked at my calendar. It's pretty empty tomorrow. It, it's for your free and wide open. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I've well, got something tomorrow yeah. with, for the Gotham Club at six o'clock. Oh, you do? Oh. Yeah, with uh, Anika Orak and her, her new book about the All American Girls Professional Baseball League that she wrote and, and did all the research, traveling all over the country, meeting with all these uh, 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 professional ball players who were women, the only professional baseball league for women ever, uh, lasted for 11 years. So, uh, so she's doing a special thing uh, that I'm going to. Uh, MC, I guess, on uh, Zoom for the Gotham Club members tomorrow, six o'clock. Great, very cool, and congrats. I could get you in though, Dave, if you know if you want. You you got a special code? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll call you tomorrow. All thanks right. for hanging, John. Yeah, great to see you. And thanks to Coors Light for sponsoring. Uh, we'll do it again uh, next week. Good night, everybody.